Hi there, and welcome to the Met Office 10 day trend. We're into October. We normally expect areas of low pressure, wet, and windy weather at this time of year, although we've certainly seen plenty of that during the last few months and throughout much of the summer. However, there is more low pressure to come. This is Sunday, a very large Atlantic system that will only slowly progress across the country during the weekend and into the start of next week. Meanwhile, something else is brewing in the mid-Atlantic, a hurricane that could influence the UK's weather later next week. Much more on that in a moment. But a far cry from low pressure. We've got higher pressure at the moment sitting over the UK, a welcome respite from all the wet weather we had across central and southern UK throughout September. That higher pressure building from the north and leading to a widespread fine day on Thursday. Sunny spells, one or two showers possible in the far southeast. Otherwise, it's widespread dry and bright weather. I'm feeling pleasant enough with lighter winds and temperatures in the mid-teens, although still a cool breeze coming from the North Sea in the southeast corner. Now, out to the west, you'll notice an area of cloud and rain. And that's going to only slowly edge in through Thursday night and western parts of Northern Ireland. And then eventually those outbreaks of mostly light at first rain come into the Western Isles. Ahead of that, clear spells and a chilly start again on Friday with the temperatures dipping into the mid or even low single figures in some shelter spots. But Friday afternoon for many is dry and bright once again. Sunny spells, a bit more cloud around, certainly across northwestern parts, Northern Ireland, Western Scotland, the breeze picks up, the cloud thickens, and further outbreaks of mostly light to moderate rain starting to appear. This is that very slow moving, but very large area of low pressure that's starting to turn up in the west. Higher pressure losing its influence, but still close enough to the UK in the east to lead to another fine day for many on Saturday, whilst this low increasingly brings unsettled weather into the west. So a west-east contrast increasingly on Saturday. We start off with some bits and pieces of rain in the far north and northwest of Scotland on Saturday. Otherwise, plenty of fine weather. The breeze picks up, the cloud builds, and in the west, certainly, it's going to deteriorate through the day on Saturday. By the afternoon, some heavy rain arriving into Pembrokeshire, Devon and Cornwall, along with an increasing wind. That wind in some exposed western parts reaching gale force by the end of the day. It's coming from a warm direction, so 16, 17 Celsius, despite the increasing clouds and the best of the sunshine there across parts of central Scotland, eastern England, staying fine throughout much of Saturday. But by Sunday, those weather fronts are making more concerted progress across the country from the west to the east. You'll notice they're weakening as they move eastwards. So cloudy, yes, and damp in places, but mostly on and off rain in the east, nothing particularly wet. Whilst Wales and the South West see the heaviest rain during Sunday, especially into the afternoon, another bout of wet weather moving through. So the general trend through the weekend is spells of rain increasingly arriving from the west and the southwest. The wettest weather most likely across Wales and the southwest. With the, the further east you are, the drier it will likely be, certainly at first. But that low pressure still with us as we start off next week. You'll notice how big it is and how the jet stream just wraps around it, hence why it's slow moving. Basically, the jet stream's not pushing it along. It's in this dip in the jet stream and it just lingers across the UK Monday, Tuesday, perhaps into Wednesday as well. Basically bringing what we call a returning polar maritime air mass. That's where the air originates in the poles, but then returns back across the UK from the southwest. So it's unstable because it's coming initially from cold air and then going over warmer seas. But it's also going to contain a lot of moisture because it's coming up from the southwest, picking up that humidity. So in a returning polar maritime air mass, we get frequent downpours, perhaps some thunderstorms and the heaviest rain is mostly towards the southwest. With some drier and brighter interludes in between the showers, it's not going to be raining everywhere all the time. It's going to be blustery though with a gusty wind, especially again towards the west and the southwest. Now, waiting in the wings, as I mentioned at the start, this, this is Kirk. By this stage, moving into the North Atlantic and becoming an X hurricane. Now I can say with confidence that Hurricane Kirk 
won't hit the UK next week. How can I be so confident about that? Well, let's take a look, first of all, at the official track from the National Hurricane Centre. And that transforms Hurricane Kirk into a major hurricane. That's category three, four or five during Thursday. And it's going to be a small but powerful beast moving north through the Atlantic, thankfully staying well clear of land areas. But it does move north. And as it moves north, what happens? it encounters much cooler seas. You'll notice this stark contrast between the North Atlantic sea temperatures at the moment and the mid or even central parts of the Atlantic. And as a result, the hurricane as it moves north will encounter cooler seas. And when sea temperatures drop below 26 and a half degrees, hurricanes lose their source of fuel. Hurricanes are tropical cyclones that are fueled by warm seas. And when they lose that fuel source, they typically die away very quickly, unless they join up with the jet stream. And that can be another source for fuel, but can also transform them into a different type of low. And that's what happens on Monday. Kirk moves far enough north that it gets picked up by the jet stream. So it stops weakening and instead it begins spinning up in a different way. Instead of deriving its fuel from warm seas, it gets its fuel from upper winds that spin it and carry it across the Atlantic. In that way, it transforms from a hurricane into what we call an extratropical cyclone or a mid-latitude low or an ex-hurricane. It's a different feature. Now, these systems that we, t you know, it's just like the one that we're experiencing at the start of the week, another one coming along there, these mid-latitude lows tend to be larger spatially but less powerful. However, they can cause some issues and there are some model predictions, plenty of model simulations that have that ex-hurricane heading towards the UK. This is from the European model and it sends ex-hurricane Kirk towards southwestern parts of the UK. We don't just look at one model simulation, we look at lots. And here's another simulation from the European model and another and quite a few simulations have that ex-hurricane or the remnants of Kirk heading towards the UK, but not all of them do. Here are the tracks from 52 simulations. And what you'll notice is that they all keep Kirk running in the same direction through the rest of the week, into the weekend and Monday. This is its likely position by Monday. And it's at this point that it enters the jet stream that the tracks start to diverge. Now, most of them do still bring something close to the UK for the end of next week. And some of them have the track going in a completely different direction. So most likely, Kirk in some shape or form will come close to the UK, either as an ex-hurricane or merging with another Atlantic low to bring mixed weather, wet and windy weather, but a typical uh, depression that we normally see in October. So it's not going to be a hurricane, but we could experience the remnants of Kirk or an ex-hurricane by the end of next week. The uncertainty lies in how it interacts with the jet stream. As you can see, it's the point at which Kirk enters the jet stream that these simulations diverge a bit more. And that's because it's a small but very powerful system. And exactly when it enters the jet stream will have big consequences on where it ends up after that. But most likely, as I say, it will come towards the UK and more or less continue the unsettled theme. So we start next week with one area of low pressure. This is the most likely weather pattern for early next week. Low pressure moving into the UK, spells of rain, especially in the west and southwest, and slightly below average temperatures. And then the most likely weather pattern for later in the week is another low. Now, whether that's ex-Hurricane Kirk or another Atlantic low, well, it's interesting to consider, but in effect, it's basically just more wet and windy weather and more spells of uh, unpleasant weather, basically, whether it's an ex-hurricane, the remnants of an ex-hurricane or a different low, I suspect won't make too much difference on people's lives. It's very likely throughout next week to be highly cyclonic, highly unsettled. This is the uh, general theme from the European model. So this averages the pressure pattern through the week and it shows definite signs for low pressure continuing through next week. And as a result, this is the rainfall anomaly through the, that week and it shows the wettest weather 
will be towards the southwest, drier towards uh, western and northern Scotland compared with average. So a south shift to jet stream, low pressure, or at least several lows through the week, whether one of them contains the remnants of ex-Hurricane Kirk or whether Kirk gets wrapped up into another system and stays away, well, that's to be decided. We'll keep you updated right here at the Met Office. Subscribe to YouTube so you never miss one of those updates.